In this video, I'm going to be rebuilding this sub $500 RTX 3060 gaming PC. I'm still going to be reviewing the specs, going through the build guide, and then later benchmarking this PC and also explaining what actually happened. We're going to start off when I got the return for the PC. Today I marked some bad news. Right here is a package that I shipped out for a normal order. And well, there are some damage to the PC, so let's see it. So far, it looks like nothing. Here we go. The damage is this dent, which isn't much, but uh, it's enough where someone's gonna wanna return it. So we're gonna have to replace this entire case and this entire PC, which is actually a pretty decent PC, so I don't mind showing this one off here. And we're gonna put all this into a new case. I never opened up a pre-built PC before, so this is also a first time for that. Looks great, except uh, that fan might be destroyed, but that's part of the case, so I don't really care about that fan. First, I'm gonna remove this graphics card, push back the clip. And this right here is the RTX 3060 from Zotac. Got this for $175, so a pretty good deal there. Uh, it looks like I'm gonna have to remove this fan too, actually. I can't really access the motherboard and the top left screw too well with this fan, so I'll have to get rid of this. There's only one screw still on this thing. Yeah, the motherboard looks untouched, so that's good. All right, let the motherboard out. And now just have a few more things. Let's look at the back here. Fortunately, everything was already cable managed, bro. A little RGB hub. All right, all the cable extensions out. Just gonna unscrew this power supply now. Now I got this mess of power supply cables. Now, what do y'all think I should do to this case? Cause the quality of this case actually isn't even that bad. And this dent is like irreparable now because of that. I'm not gonna lie, I think I'll still link this case even though it got dented. I mean, it's not bad quality at all. So I don't know. And here it is, gone from the case. Like it's over like $15, $20 maybe. All right, now we're putting everything into this new case. This is from DIY PC. I'm pretty sure this is a new release from them. Uh, but I'll check it out. It's a lot like Sama's case. So I don't know who's copying who here. Let's open this up. Boom. Doesn't this case look familiar? But I've never actually shown this one on camera before, so. Yeah, there are some copycats going around. This one does have a screw though. Dang. All right, so. Grab the screw bag from the back. Now, all right, first, first remove the plastic. And now install the IO shield. And then using this little tool right here, I'm going to move the standoffs to the correct spots. Now it's time to put the motherboard in. Now using these screws right here, you can screw in the motherboard. And there we go. All right, now it's time to route all of these case cords, except for the type C, into the motherboard. For the HD audio right here, USB 3.0 goes around here. And same with the F panel. So the USB 3.0 goes more in the middle. Here first, I'm gonna plug in the HD audio into the bottom left of the motherboard. It's the same on every motherboard. And then the USB 3.0, and then the F panel, I'll just leave up a graph on what that looks like. And just because I can, I'm gonna take the uh, cable extensions, plug in the CPU top left there, and then the motherboard one. And then one last thing, I'm gonna use the RGB hubs fan and then plug that into the other fan hub. All right, now we can install our Segotep 650 watt gold power supply. There's only four cords we need here. The motherboard power, a SATA cable, PCIe, and a CPU. First, I'm just gonna plug in the CPU right here as we already connected the cable extension. Then I'm gonna route the PCIe into the front here so it just makes it easier for us later on. Then I'm just gonna take the SATA, plug it into the RGB hub. And then last, we have the motherboard power. Plugs in like that. And now with all the leftover cords, I kinda just shove them in there. Kind of a mess right now, but that'll fix that when I make sure everything is working. Now I think the last thing to do is just take off this bracket and install the graphics card. And here we can install our RTX 3060. 
Now I'm gonna take the last cable extension, plug it into the GPU. Now, oh, this is the final product. Um, it does look a bit small here, but this is the best I could do for now. And uh, I have plenty of cases, so this is just the next best option. Still think it looks all right, just a bit misproportioned. And now let's plug everything in. Okay, I might have forgotten the RGB. <laughs> Boom. And for those of you that want the scoop, this PC has a Ryzen 5 5600 that I paid $75 for, a Machinist B450 motherboard, which I paid $45 for, at least here, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 for $35, a Team Group 1 terabyte NVMe for about $52, an ID cooling 120 millimeter air cooler for about $18. Then the original case was a Dark Flash DB330M. And then this new case is the DRI PC ARGB N5W. This one's about $65 as well. And then we have the Zotac RTX 360, which is already mentioned. I paid $175 used. And the cable extension is about $10 on AliExpress. Overall, this PC is under $500, 474 to be exact for me. And yeah, how do you think I did? Shortly be listing this for sale and hopefully I can sell it for a bigger profit this time. All right, so starting off games here, we have Fortnite 1440p we have performance mode and then all those settings except for view distance which is far and then Nvidia low latency is on. Okay, I did not know about this all Star Wars season we have going on here, but as we can see, we're getting pretty much always over 240 FPS. If we start over the benchmark here, as you can see, so we're getting pretty high FPS here, over 240 consistently with an RTX 3060, which only cost me $175. What is going on here? There's no way, there's no way anyone with a budget computer can handle this. What is this? Bro, he's a real person. This isn't fair. Over 240 FPS pretty consistently. Big temps. Great. Swiftly moving on, we have Marvel Rivals, 4040p, NVIDIA DLSS performance, all enabled low latency, and then we have all low settings here. Never mind, no low latency for me. Just kidding. Why do I have to have AI for teammates, but the other team is playing this like it's competitive, bro? What is going on, bro? So if we look here, we're having a little bit over 120 FPS. Um, pretty decent at 1440p here because we're about to see what it is at 1080p in a bit. Now we're in 1080p as you can tell by the big numbers. Anyways, I can't really tell if we're getting more FPS in 1080p. Usually we do here. Okay, well there's more here for sure, but unlucky. We still got pretty good frames. 1080p, 1440p. I might have the settings bit wrong, but it's plenty good, don't worry. All right, so first on Cyberpunk, we're gonna be testing out a high preset and then sending it to DLSS, high quality. Let's see it. 73 FPS on average, still hitting above 60, so that's good. And now I'm gonna be testing out ray tracing low, no frame gen, 1440p. And with a little bit of ray tracing, 52 FPS, Still high texture quality, but I don't know. That's for you guys to decide. Is it still good for Cyberpunk? I mean, yes, you could definitely figure that out. I would not use ray tracing. That is what I've concluded here. I'm actually just gonna run it all on low here with DLSS and let's see how high FPS can get here. About 100 FPS, all low settings, 1440p Cyberpunk. Nothing revolutionary here, but definitely playable. And this is the last game of benchmarking. Updates have taken way too long, and uh, yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. Considering this PC costs less than most GPUs. So yeah, basically what happened is the customer messaged me because the PC came damaged. And now that was pretty scary to hear, but it turns out it was just the case that got damaged, which I saw and didn't think it would be so bad. So eventually it came to the resolution of getting return. Now I paid for return shipping, but before we replaced the PC, I went to file a claim. Basically UPS was only able to refund me for the case and then like partial return shipping because the case is valued at like $64 and the entire PC is valued around 800. So I was barely getting anything for the return shipping even though i had to pay 50 dollars but i only got refunded four because it was just 
part of the computer that was damaged. So I don't know if I messed up there with the claim, but hopefully it will sell for more at least to cover some of that. But unlucky experience. Hopefully I will improve next time. And this is also for you guys. If you are selling PCs, this can definitely happen. Anyways, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos, more PC flipping videos, along with more PC build guides. This was kind of a two-in-one deal. Yeah.